Hi, this is Pete, M0PSX. And this is Kelly, M6KFA, from Essex Ham. In October 2019, an interesting thread appeared online in the RSGB workshop group. This centred around a familiar topic, the reluctance to change that's so prevalent within amateur radio, and just how damaging this is to the hobby's future. Central to the debate was a proposal for a beginner amateur licence, to encourage a new generation to get a taste of the hobby, removing some of the barriers that we've established to keep people out. This stimulated so much debate and support that the RSGB group moderator shut down the thread within 24 hours, preventing further discussion. Personally, I believe that debate's important, and many of us seem to agree that change is actually needed. So I caught up with the proposal's author to find out a little more. I'm John Reno on G4SWX. I um, have drawn up a proposal or a suggestion for a beginner's amateur radio licence, which is all about communication, not about technical, and it's about communicating and being able to talk to each other I have identified that as a gap in the VHF market. Those that do the foundation or intermediate license almost immediately want to go on the short waves to become, like the people who teach them at the local radio clubs, good amateurs on the short waves. However, when I started in 1971, it was VHF only. And it drove a lot of people to experiment and do different things. If you're a chap who lives in a tower block, you can't put up external aerials, but you could have a 25 quid walkie-talkie, which is the lowest entry barrier, technically, for the hobby, and chat through the local repeater. But to do that, you have to jump through hoops that other people have set so that you will become clones of the existing HF amateurs. To me, That is all wrong. There are a number of people out there who have concerns about the RSGB's current policy on exams. Some feel that at a time where numbers are in decline, making exams harder and increasing the fail rate is not necessarily a good thing for the hobby. Many people also think that today's amateurs should be learning about radio communication and not about circuits and theory. What's John's take on all this? In the past, in the 1980s and 90s, I used to teach the more advanced end of the electronics to the RE classes. Um, I realised that what was being taught was utterly pointless. That actually resistors in series or capacitors or even tuned circuits are not relevant to most people that will go out, they will buy a transceiver and they will operate. And I would argue that's not just a VHF, UHF problem, but also on short waves. If you ask many radio amateurs that operate on the HF bands to put together a circuit, they probably haven't got a clue. And that worries me because I'm a technical person. I have degree, masters and all sorts of things like that. But I recognise that people that just want to come on the radio and communicate. And there has to be a space and there has to be room for them as well. So should that be VHF? Ah, well, I have an ulterior reason. I am the RSGB's VHF manager. I am responsible for the good health and dealing with the uh, radio regulator Ofcom at VHF and UHF. My worry is I see pressure on the bands. We've seen massive pressure from the French this year to, for 144 even... And the difficulty I have as the VHF manager is showing the level of occupancy on the bands. Some people will say, well, I come on once a month and I do the activity contest, so I'm doing a lot of good, aren't I? Well, actually, all right, you're on, that's nice, that's good, you've contributed. But the chap that sits and chatters on the local repeater for 15 minutes every day on his way to and from work produces a signal on the input and a signal on the output and in terms of the Ofcom spectrum occupancy statistics is actually doing an awful lot more than somebody coming on for a couple of hours a month. So let's say we go this route and we agree that there is an entry level need for VHF and up. What kind of structure would that be do you think? 
the first thing about the structure is that it is important for somebody to come on almost instantly or within a week or something like that if they have adequate knowledge to satisfy that they can sit within the license conditions. Now, we can tweak the terms of the license like that. There is already a slight tweak in the foundation license about modification of equipment. But at VHF UHF, you could quite happily have, say, 5 watts output, CE marked, and I have a real issue of why is that different from a business radio, a marine radio, or a PMR 446 radio. So the potential for that amateur generating interference is no worse than anything else. So therefore, you only need to pay attention to the process of dealing with interference, not the technical reasons for doing a resolution. Okay, so would you think, for instance, could this be maybe, let's say, a 5 watt licence, VHF and above, and to pass it you have to prove a basic understanding of the frequency schedule and EMC. Would that be enough? I think a little bit more than that. I think showing an understanding and a comprehension that you understand what the licence conditions mean and what action you should take should you be worried about one. Now, some would say that the current structure that we've got, the three-level licence, foundation, you can do it in a weekend. It's fairly straightforward. We've got kids of 8, 9, 10 passing foundation. Why isn't that enough? Why would you need a more simple licence? To get the current licence, you need to do it in conjunction with the radio club. 60% of the UK population is more than 50 miles away from a radio club that does anything like that. There are also people that don't necessarily want to associate with others. The most extreme case is people with Asperger's syndrome. But those people are very, very bright. They'd make brilliant, innovative radio amateurs. So why put up barriers for them? John's proposal has already met with some resistance, and proposals like this, or for a less theory-based syllabus, always generate cries of dumbing down the hobby, or not upholding amateur radio's traditional and historic values. John, how do you respond to comments like that? I would respond that a lot of people, as they get older, are very, very resistive to change. But that makes me quite annoyed, because I'm now in my mid-60s, and I feel that my peer group is ultra resistant to change. Not only that, is that these people are seeing only seeing new radio amateurs as clones of themselves. In other words, people who will do the same things that they like to do on the short waves, will perhaps do a bit of CW and all the rest of it. That to me is not amateur radio. Amateur radio is a much broader hobby because it can be somebody that just communicates and chats via a repeater or one-to-one, -one, but it can also be somebody at the technical extreme of the hobby, like myself, that operates moon bounce. Rather than looking for clones of the existing clones, then you are going to have much greater interest. You will have a more diverse input. So what if you have more women than men? It might get rid of some of the bloke in the anorak in the garden shed syndrome that has fogged amateur radio for years. Excellent. John, thank you very much. It's been very refreshing talking to you. And I'll hopefully work you on VHF sometime soon. Thank you, Pete. You can look for me on Two Metres. I occasionally wander across the band. I have got capability for the HF bands, but um, after this, I might not be welcome there. So if you come across John on 40 or 80 metres, please be gentle with him. I'm really keen to get your comments on John's proposal. Many of us are worried about the hobby's future, and discussion is important. Given the moderation policy on the RSGB workshop group, that's not the place to discuss it. So we've set up our own group. If you have something to say on this topic, or anything else related to the hobby's trajectory, please feel free to get chatting in the new HamChat group on groups.io. Thanks again to John G4SWX. We'll no doubt be returning to this topic soon. This feature was brought to you by Essex Ham.